Welcome back. We're here at the big board and we're going to have a talk about 1938 What If. It comes from uh, Ty Bomber as designer and One Small Step as the manufacturer or uh, publisher, I should say. Whatever, it's all the same, right? And um, this is an interesting little title that uh, is trying to take a slightly different tack than a lot of the other What If games that uh, Ty has released recently. Uh, but before we get into that, let's have a quick look at the components and the map, and, and then we'll, we'll talk about um, my first few turns with the game, and then I'm actually in the middle of resetting it to play again, because I made a couple of mistakes, which is part and parcel for uh, <clears throat> being a distracted gamer. Maybe that's what I should call the blog, the distracted gamer. Anyway, uh, map art is interesting. It's a little dark. Uh, and it uh, makes the numbers a little hard to read, but not terrible. The counters are nice. The artwork is nice on uh, the counters. There's a uh, decent thickness. There are some challenges with some of the counters. The 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 you know the fronts of them have peeled away very easily, and the punching exercise out of the sprues was not a particularly fun uh, experience to to go through. So. Overall, you know, not unhappy, but not uh, ecstatic. It wasn't perfect, I guess. Not that I expect everything to be perfect. And also the artwork, I, I'm not sure I like this this sort of gray steel sort of color uh, for the mountains and then the gray writing on the maps. While it doesn't detract from the what you're, from the actual art on the map, it's, it makes it a little bit hard to, le uh, to read. And, you know, you've got Poland here spread out all the way across. Oh, sorry, there's my hand. You can't see that. Uh, Poland spread out all the way across here. And sorry for the glare. It just is what it is today. It's a bright, sunny day, and I'm in the corner. I've got two two uh, two windows, so that's as good as it's going to get. Uh, I've got it set up again, so we're going to pull all these guys off. Uh, <clears throat> and the objective here, it's set in and around the uh, Munich Agreement time frame. Um, it just makes some assumptions about who would be who would have been willing to fight and over what and for how long. Uh, the game is set in the uh, in the uh, with the premise that there's about a month's worth of supply and fighting and uh, and desire to fight. Uh, you have two sides. You've got the Germans and the Poles, uh, basically allying against the Czech uh, Czechoslovakians. Hungarians are going to jump in on the Germans and Poles side, and then the Soviets over here and here are going to make a mad dash uh, to try and grab some land in uh, Poland as well. So it's you know a little bit what ify. Now the the challenge is depending on how well a game is play tested, you can have some unusual results. And I I've. First time I played this, I didn't really protect the the German territory per se. I just assumed because I I had read but uh, forgotten this rule 4.2 that uh, allows any city that's captured by the by the Czechs that's in German territory is an auto victory. So what this does is forces almost a uh, the you know the the need to make sure that this entire border is covered. Now, of course, what that does is severely limits the number of combat units that are going to be able to come and try and take on these forces uh, that are going to have to come through this mountain range or or these fortress areas or both, and you know attempt to win. Right? And there's another another fortress here, another area here that needs to be protected. So. You know, knocking out the the checks quickly is is literally not going to happen unless you roll a one on every combat, and that is the beginning of where things become very very difficult, because we've also got to deal with the East Prussian situation, where <clears throat> uh, you've got to choose how many forces you're going to put in there. Are you going to try and screen and protect this river and stop the Soviets from coming in? Because they want to capture uh, at least five Polish cities to stop the Germans from winning. 
or capture a city, you know, Danzig or whatever the case may be in East Prussia. And that's, that's going to uh, have dire consequences for the Germans as well. So there's a lot of extraneous, uh, external forces putting pressure on the Germans, yet the Germans don't have the really the wherewithal to fight on all fronts at the same time. The Poles are really only going to be used in defensive mode. Uh, so you've got to kind of sweep these guys using strategic movement. You know, that just doubles your movement rate. There's no roads, there's no rail uh, or anything like that. <clears throat> you double the movement rate and you got to, you know, double them up. And you're probably going to have to abandon this portion of the map pretty quickly. Otherwise, these guys will be isolated and out of supply and bad things happen to you in that circumstance. So you've got to kind of pull back along the the Lublin, uh, Brest, Lub, Lub, um, Lubisk. Uh, Krakow line here somewhere, probably even further, uh, potentially all the way up the loads before, if if the Soviets bring a bring a big push this way, which is what I did. You know, a couple of turns we were up here and we'd isolated a couple of units uh, because they didn't move fast enough or get an opportunity to move until the until uh, after the so Soviets go first in the first turn uh, prior to the poles. Uh, but the Germans obviously move and fight before the before the Soviets. So tricky game and a little bit of a puzzle thing going on here. So I, I wanted to reset it and give it another shot. Um, you know, the air war tends to help a little bit here, uh, but not an enormous amount because you do have these uh, awkward terrain uh, circumstances to deal with. The other thing that's interesting too is there's a lot of the map taken up with these tables for terrain, you know, terrain type, movement costs and effects, and combat effects. There's three three charts all, all sort of spread out here. Would it be nice to have this all on one page, perhaps in the rule book somewhere in the back, and make these hexes all just a you know, little bit bigger, and then we could have had a little more room, it just would have been a little nicer, a little more spread out, would have uh, preferred that. Then this stuff all slapped on the map on the side. And you've got, you know, the big kind of, you know, white boxes here for chits. This doesn't need to be this big. Here's the chit. You know, we could have done this this size here as well without crowding. Uh, and this really stands out too because everything's so dark and green. And you've got these big white uh, sort of garish boxes sitting on the side there. So... Anyway, I want to give you guys a quick insight. I've already recorded this video before, but because I realized I made a few mistakes and then I, uh, I probably misrepresented some parts of the game, um, I decided to redo it. Now, this is the you know mostly standard sort of type bomber. Uh, you, uh, you either move or you fight, uh, and you choose which one you're gonna do first, but the, the, the twist on this is that it's chip pull. So I've got a little cup here, and I'm gonna have you know, the Hungarians are going to get to move or fight. The Czechs are going to get to move or fight. The po you know, the Poles are going to get to move and fight. And we'll, we'll see what happens, right? So let's, uh, let's get after it. We'll get to finish getting set up and we'll kind of go, uh, go at it from there. Thought I'd share that with you. We'll talk to you soon.